Teaching Blast. Technical seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Another problem that you can identify with uh, your profiler tool, the garbage collector is running much too frequently, or the garbage collector is running and it's very, very slow. So if it's slow, that means you probably have like a large heap. It might be fragmented. Um, so what are some things that you can do? You can try to reduce the number of temporary objects that are created. Um, one of the classic examples when you're talking about performance is the difference between using the plus sign as a concatenation operator for strings versus using string builder or string buffer. And so the problem is that the way that uh, the concatenation operator works is that he keeps making objects in memory and then they releases them and making them available for garbage collection. So if you're using that plus sign much too frequently, you're just going to send that garbage collector into a frenzy. So try to reduce the number of temporary objects that are created. Um, if all else fails, carefully, carefully consider using a different garbage collector. Now, the best practice here is, at first, let the JVM decide. It probably knows better than us in terms of which garbage collector should be used. But if all else is failing and you're not being able to get um, performance to what you need, um, you may want to start to try different garbage collectors. We have the parallel compactor. This is good when you have multiple CPUs, where the response time isn't as important as the overall throughput. And you can do that by using this uh, command line option that I've listed here. Uh, again, the command line options are just something that you would put in when you start up the JVM. The uh, parallel compacting collector, this is good for multiple CPUs where response time um, is more important. And then you can select that with the ergonomic I listed down here. There's the concurrent mark sweep collector. This is good for apps running on machines with few CPUs that need more frequent garbage collection. And again, there's your ergonomic of what you'd be able to use in the command line to specify that garbage collector. What if your application just hangs? It's running, it's running, and all of a sudden it hangs. Um, in that case, we've identified that typically by looking at our thread monitor, and we can rewrite uh, that using any code, um, rewriting the code that's causing a deadlock. Now, when you're looking at the algorithms, one of the things you can look at are benchmarking. Now, there, we talked about macro benchmarking, but there's also micro benchmarking. And this is where you write a small block of code to determine the most optimal algorithm and or data structures. So here I show you a little example of what I'm doing is uh, making a timestamp, running some sort of a process, then taking another timestamp, subtracting the two and figuring out how long this is run. Thing is, this is a little bit dangerous. Um, micro benchmarks can give false positives due to the way that the hotspot JVM works. So a hotspot, when your compiler works, it starts in interpretive mode. It interprets the code, which is slow. Once it decides that, hey, this has already been called, it's probably going to be called again, then it compiles it, and every subsequent call on that block of code is much faster. Um, so there are a couple things that you can do. I'll show you some other code. The other thing is that you can't just write dead variables that are never used beyond assignment. So what some people might do is say, okay, well, if I call a method, it's going to run faster or it's going to be compiled and I'll see some more uh, realistic performance or uh, production time values of what's going on with my code. So they'll create a folk, uh, um, a a fake um, method here that doesn't really do anything. It does some, you know, fake assignments, and then it's done. Well, most JVMs are smart enough to ignore code that isn't truly used. So I've got this method here called throwaway, and you can see that I'm, you know, just assigning a couple of strings to a new string, but I'm not doing anything with that variable or a new string. Most JVMs would recognize that and say, I'm not even going to process that code. It's a waste of time. Um, that's one of the ways that JVMs have improved their own performance over time. So again, you know, you might start seeing better performance than you expect, or in some cases worse. So um, the Oracle fact on Hotspot makes the following recommendations if you're going to do any of these micro benchmarks. And I've included the URL here for you. Um, create a method outside of main to encapsulate your micro benchmark, and call this method once before running the timestamp benchmark. 
So you might do something that looks like this. You can see in my main what I'm doing is I call the run test method, which runs my test, once. Then the next time I call it, I take my timestamp, I run the test, I get another timestamp, and I'm able to calculate the duration. You'll notice that I've decided to print out the random string that it was generating inside this run test. I did that so it didn't think that the random string was a variable that wasn't used. I don't want it to skip it. So that's one way you can do a micro um, benchmark. But you really want to be careful. Can't stress this enough. Micro benchmarks um, are, uh, can be helpful, but a lot of the times they won't truly identify um, what will improve the performance of your application. So just a couple more things I want to do quickly here. Um, I know we're running out of time. Um, I'll show you an example of slow, of slow performance, excuse me, <laughs> out of memory issue and when an application freezes. So I'm going to share my desktop again. All right, let's look at some slow code. So I've got this running right now, in fact. Let's go back to my profiler. And I'm going to stop this. I'm going to look at uh, the CPU. Let's look at something that's running slowly. All right, looks like it's running. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to my reservations. And when I click and select a date, what I know is supposed to be happening is that all these zeros, which tell me how many available seats there are, should actually be displaying what the real number of seats are. And I'm not seeing it change. It should change to five for most. There we go. It just changed. That ran pretty slow. So if I go here back to my profiler, I look at the profiler and look at the CPU, and I can see that, oh, there's clearly something that's taking a lot of time to run. And if I move this over, I can see that the method is, oh, it's do bottleneck. So how many times is it being called? 25 times. It runs very slow. Those are two bad things. So what I would probably do then is go back into my code, look at the uh, reservation manager, Look for that method called do bottleneck, which in this case, again, is a trivial example. I forced it to sleep, so that's why it's taking a lot longer to run. But in your real-world applications, the results would be exactly the same. You would see some sort of a method that's a hotspot that's taking too long to run. So in here, I would decide who's calling this and what can I do to make this run faster. Should it be called less? Can I do anything to make it run faster? Um, Another thing is uh, deadlock. So if I go back to my app here and I look at some online ordering for food, I know that when I select some things here, place an order, click submit, that I should be seeing a quickly a response message that tells me your order has been confirmed, here's your total. So I go back to this and I say, well, hmm, I'm not seeing anything. Um, too bad, that's as bad as what I saw with my uh, do bottleneck. So I'm going to go to my threads. And now I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and I can see down at the very bottom here, my threads, restaurant thread B and restaurant thread A. And when I see that red, I know there's a problem. I can instantly say, like, oh, this is, this is not good. There is um, probably a deadlock that's going on. So I'll take a thread dump, click on that button. And what I'm seeing here now is a stack trace of all of the uh, different threads that I have available. So I'll look at restaurant thread B and A, and here I can see it's blocked. It's blocked on a, on a monitor, um, and it's waiting for this lock, for this particular string object. So that will tell me, like, okay, I need to go through these threads, and I need to examine what they're locking on and see if I can try to identify a deadlock. Again, my code itself is pretty trivial. It's, it's creating a uh, deadlock on purpose. Um, here's that deadlock that's created. But again, you know, we don't typically don't make deadlocks on purpose. They will still show up exactly the same way inside of our monitor. And we already took a look at uh, what an out-of-memory error would look like. So those are some of the things that you can find by using uh, your visual profiler. All right, some best practice summaries. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, but uh, you should uh, make sure you avoid, don't use system.gc, which is what, 
can, it's a, again a hint to the uh, garbage collector, I think you should run now. Typically in our applications, we don't know when the garbage collector should run. That's best left up to the JVM. Don't optimize until tests demonstrate that there is a performance issue, as I stressed earlier. Consider using weak object references, and I will, again, point out that uh, resource that I've included here that you can read for more information on that. Consider caching. Look at the data structures and algorithms. Some of those you can test with micro benchmarks. There's lots of great books on different algorithms and how they perform and the strengths and weaknesses of different data structures. For example, the difference between a, uh, uh, an array list and a linked list. Some are better at random access than others. And design patterns. So does, there are performance design patterns out there uh, that are designed specifically for the task of improving performance. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.